Um, huh. yeah, who wants to start? What? Anybody jump in? John, John <laughs> it's amazing to have you back. Oh, thanks. Um, we love talking to you yesterday a little bit about Bender and uh, the origins of that voice. Mm -hmm. um, he's also given us some of the best lines I've ever heard on any TV show ever. Um, yeah. And I'm sure fans, when they come up, tell you their favorites. Have you got favorite ones? And what are the ones you get most requested? Um, well, the, the catchphrase, uh, bite my shiny metal ass, is uh, really the one that I think everybody, everybody really loves that one. Um, but, you know, uh, cheese it, you know, when, <laughs> you know to, when Bender runs away. and uh, Gosh, there's others. Um, I mean, that story I, told, that story I told yesterday about, you know, you know, Walking past the window, all uh, Batman '66, and you know, lose some, oh, you know, get a room, you two. Oh, we're in a room. Well, I lose some weight. You know, this is one of my favorites. Um, but uh, but there's oh, you know, then the, when you know, Bender's uh, Bender's should not be allowed on TV. You know, the the, the whole spe the whole touching speech about how you know sometimes when you know. You know, Bender just gets all really sweet and wonderful, and then basically says to hit your kids. You know, <laughs> just pummel them, really, which is kind of ridiculous. But everybody always has something to say, and, and you know, that's that's different. But mostly, I'm lucky because it's just straight up bite my shiny metal glass. and that gets them every time. Which is, you know, so it's it's kind of funny. You know. So Bender likes to think of himself as someone who doesn't care about anyone, but whenever you put him in a situation where there's sort of orphans involved or someone in need, he actually can't help himself but care. Yeah, it's interesting because he was, I mean, it, the introduction of the show, he, he was such a narcissist and, and just was so self-centered. And I think him having Fry and, and their growing friendship you know, throughout the show and the series, I think that changed him a lot and kind of, uh, you know, and, and you know, it, that's one of those things about a show that gets to, that gets to have the life that it had. Um, you know, the, the, the characters, the characters will change and, and you know, over time and, 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 you know, grow. And I think Bender grew, it grew a lot um, as far as that's concerned about, you know, caring about other people. And uh, and uh, and especially orphans, and you know, he he would he, he I think he fell in, he fell in love a bunch of times, um, but his growing friendship with Fry I think has everything to do with it. Um, and you know, I mean, his funkometer changed. You know, his funkometer got a little he got a little more funkier as the show went on. You know, put a little more soul in it. Yeah, you know, a little that kind of thing. You know, you know, like you know when he's walking out of when he's walking out of the courtroom. Uh, you know, after getting busted for pimping, you know, just, we love you, Bender. Shut up, baby. I know it. You know that that stuff, and that's that's really kind of just like, oh yeah, baby. And you know, when he's fooling around with the femputer and Amazon women on the moon, uh, on the moon, and you know, got to fool around with B. Arthur, you know, one of the Golden Girls, which is ridiculous. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I, I had I was actually recording with with B. Arthur and telling her, oh yeah, baby, give me some of that. And then you don't really normally get to do that with B. Arthur, so that's kind of, you know, it's very funny. But yeah, Bender, uh, yeah, his narcissism, yeah, it was totally, totally narcissistic, but it, it, it starts to fade as the show grows, so. When, when we get to see another dose of Bender? When will we get to see another dose of Bender? You know, that's a good question because uh, we did that mobile game yes. recently, and in order to promote it, we did a basically a radio show of Futurama, and it was and it was interesting because it was it was it was uh, it, it cost less to do because there was no animation yeah. involved. Um, so, it, but it was longer than a normal episode. So if, if we do another mobile game, which I'm sure can happen, we may do another, you know, uh, a radio show to promote the, uh, to promote the game again. 
So I don't know. I haven't been approached for anything, but I, with this show and the amount of times it's been canceled, I don't even know. You, you whatever. I'm, uh, you know, anything can happen. So I, I'm, uh, you know, fingers crossed. Knock on wood. Carry a rabbit's foot. Do whatever you got to do because that's uh, that's really it. Apart know. from yourself, like who's the greatest voice actor? I, <laughs> I know the, the greatest voice actor is Mel Blanc. Um, period. He wrote the book. He's he's the master. Um, right now, uh, I'd say the best in, best in the biz: Frank Welker, Billy West, Maurice Lamarche. Um, you know, uh, uh, I mean, we got some got some guys here that are, that are top top notch: Jim Cummings and Jess Harnell. Um, you know, but but it, it all depends on what you like. It's subjective. So I mean, you know, some people might just be like, hey, John Demand, you're sick of that guy. I don't know. You know, I mean, who knows? But thank you for the compliment. But I just, I don't. Know. I think the show got cancelled when I came back. Did you notice any change to um, the the way it was written? No, uh, none. Did you feel none. It, 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 it made me angry. It ma I'll tell you this. It made me angry. When fans would say, "Well, it's different. It's di it's not the same. It's uh, you know the, the writing is different and all that." Yeah, it's, no, it's that's all BS. It's all nonsense. Same writers. In fact, if there were new writers, they were the writing assistants that became writers on the show, which is true. But everybody had the pedigree. Everybody had the Simpsons pedigree. Which is interesting about the new show that we're doing, Disenchantment for Netflix. Um, a ton of Simpsons and Futurama alumni, um, and 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 you know when you work with people like that, they have it's a well-oiled machine. So you know that that it, it, Futurama was basically uh, Matt's baby when he did it, and we just. It was easy, I mean, for me, like, there's just the clockwork that, at, at which the show worked. It, it, was, it was amazing. Um, and it, it was just a, it was a solid formula from the get-go. Because they'd already done all the homework with The Simpsons. So it, the, 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 the framework was just perfectly laid out for us. What can you tell us about Disenchantment? Uh, what can I tell you about Disenchantment? I, I said something... Yesterday, and it and I it came back to bite me in the ass on Twitter. <laughs> Somebody totally quoted me as saying, you know, and it's true. It, it, and I don't even know if I'm supposed to say anything, um, except that it's anything? except that no, I I haven't really signed anything. But uh, but but I'm not going to tell anybody like what the like the names of the characters are. I'm playing the king or a king. Um, and uh, and and the, the the show is basically you know if the Simpsons fornicated with Game of Thrones and that's really I mean it's really you know I mean and that's my way of saying it I mean I don't know it's I don't know if that's Netflix approved or not but you know hopefully I'll, you know I won't get canned because of it because you can't say that you know well, yeah you can because um, it's kind of true you know but it's it's really uh, it's timely and it's really 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 funny. And, you know, even though it's on Netflix, it's still, it's, it's, it's not filthy. It's not just, you know, it's not like, hey, Matt Groening wants to say the F word. You know, it's not, it doesn't have any, no, it's not, it's not that. Um, but it's, it's brilliant. They, they, they can, they could be, they could be filthy without being filthy. They get it, they know how to do it. Um, They've been doing it long enough. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's the thing, and that's that's it's really cool. It's and it's really funny, and it looks great. Like you know, that's the one thing like that's different from doing an actual television show where you're on a set and you're you're acting the lines in front of a camera, as opposed to doing a, 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 an animated show because you don't know what it looks like until you you're you're in post production and you come in to do like ADR. Possibly, you know, and and so, um, so the, I mean, and I've seen this stuff, and it's oh, it's just great. It's just really great. And Matt's character design is just so. It's just it's it's great. You know, it's just fantastic. So I can't would, wait for everybody to see it. Would the Simpsons or uh, 
his, his previous work would we, we recognize it or is it oh no it's it's new? it's very clear and it, it you can totally recognize it and people like i saw something on twitter god twitter is just oh man <laughs> The people were just like, oh, it looks like The Simpsons. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's the same guy draw, you know, it's the same guy drawing it. Like, what are you, what are you thinking? Like, it's, I don't know, it, people sometimes <laughs> ding dongs, but whatever. It's all good. It's, it's a funny show, and I'm just happy to be a part of it. So Futurama's had a whole bunch of celebrities, historical figures. Anyone is fair game to bring in as a guest star. If Bender could have anyone as his next romance, who would you bring on? Ooh. If we were still doing Futurama and Bender had a shot at, well, who would I want to, wow. I'd want to, I'd want to have my wife doing it <laughs> so I don't get in trouble. Yeah. Good that's answer. What, yeah, that's a good one, right? <laughs> Dodge the bullet on that one, man. Um, no, I mean, you know, it, I mean, that's really fun. Lucy Liu. Lucy Liu, I had in a jar, and, and, uh, and my wife did an episode of Elementary with her, and, and she was just my my husband says hello from <laughs> in, from inside. You know, you, you were inside his body, and she was just like, "What?" <laughs> Bender, if you try, she'd be like, "Oh my god, that was so much fun." Um, but yeah, I, you know, I'm done being safe, and saying my wife, Kate Miller, has done. <laughs> um, I mean, so, self-aware robots are a bit of a mainstay of pop culture, so you've got Bender, Terminator, robots from Star Wars. Do you have any favorite fictional robots apart from Bender? Um, the, uh, let's see, I don't know, I always like the old Lost in Space with the danger, Will Robinson, <laughs> danger, um, liked him, oh uh, god, what other, what other robots? Watch a lot of Westworld. Those are, yeah, those are. Oof. That's some crazy. Those are some crazy robots. Uh, gee, who else? Johnny Sacco and his flying robot. You guys remember that? No, nah, no, but I'm, yeah, I'm aging all of you. Yeah, yeah, you did just make that one up. Woo! No, that's not true. Johnny Sacco and his flying robot. It was this what show. It was an about? animated show. It was. I mean, no, it was an animated show. It was a live action show. Um, it, from like the late 50s, early 60s, from Japan, and it was this you know, big... Into Wikipedia, it, it, no, you got, no, Google that, man. <laughs> Johnny Sacco and his flying robot. I loved that show when I was growing up as a kid. It was great. He shot missiles from his hands. He would fly around on the robot. It was awesome. You got, no, I can't even explain it. It's too much. Yeah, I like the robot from Johnny Sacco. And his flying robot. Yeah, I totally remember that. <laughs> Boom, right there. Came back. I've been talking about awesome characters. The great thing about the world, the universe of Futurama, is the supporting characters and the ones that have reoccurred along the way. Yeah. Um, can you talk about some of your favorite? And obviously, I mean, you guys get to provide the voices for a lot of them, you know. One of my favorite, uh, actually, I mean, I, I love playing Bender, but my, my favorite character from Futurama is Zoidberg. <laughs> Why not Zoidberg? <laughs> I'm not hearing a no. <laughs> it's one of my, I mean, it was so fun. Well, when we did the show, everybody loved Zoidberg. Mm -hmm. And, in you know, and, and Billy doing the voice of Zoidberg was just absolutely brilliant. And, and I would just mimic him constantly just to try and get some dueling Zoidbergs going, <laughs> you know. La, 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 la. <laughs> like, Oh, are you gonna eat that sandwich? You know, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, he's he's uh, hands down one of my favorites. I love Zoidberg. Um, but as far as like recurring character, like characters that would come back and for, there was um, Mayor Poopenmeyer always <laughs> cracked me up. And hey, I had this kind of a voice where he was talking. It was Dave Herman that did it, who also plays Scruffy, who's also one of my favorites. <laughs> Scruffy. Janitor. Um, but Dave Herman, you know who he is. David Herman is uh, Michael Bolton in uh, Office Space, <laughs> that actor. He's also on like Bob's Burgers and, and uh, King of the Hill. He's been, he's been doing, he was a Mad TV uh, uh, cast member, um, as was Phil Lamar, who was, you know, who was also in the show as Hermes. Um, and the original Leela. Uh, was uh, Nicole uh, Sullivan, who was on Mad TV, and they replaced her with Katie. Interesting trivia. Mm -hmm. There you go. 
Charlie, um, part of a particularly comedic duo in Lego Star Wars The Three Maker Adventures. And I wondered what your experience was working on that project. Uh, Star Wars? Yeah. That was with uh, uh, Danny Jacobs. Yeah. Me and Danny Jacobs playing the... the, the, the Ram. Yeah, Bash and Ram. Well, the interesting thing about that is the guys that, the guys that wrote and, and, and produced that were guys that worked on um, Penguins of Madagascar. And Danny and I worked on Penguins of Madagascar together. He, was, uh, he took over the, the voice of King Julian, and I was Rico, the regurgitating penguin, which was actually a lot of fun, because I would try and make the voice director barf in the studio, <laughs> because I had to make a lot of those noises. And if you're, you know, if you're doing vomit noises, you can get people to <laughs> It's that thing where, you know, if you just, Oh my God! Uh, people, if they look at you, they start. Oh, don't do. Oh, oh, and it just, yeah, and then it just, yeah, forget it. It all, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a downhill spiral from there. But that's that. Yeah, that was a lot of fun working with. Well, Danny's a great guy, and it was, it was, uh, it was totally a lot of fun doing that. It was, it was a blast, and and yeah, I I work with Danny in a heartbeat. He's great, and and the guys that did the show, they're, they're fantastic. You touched a bit on the emotional journey that Bender went through in Futurama, but with um, Adventure Time with yes. Jake. Yeah. Um, and also, there was some fan backlash when it went from singular episodes to more involved, in depth storylines that touched on quite, quite a few difficult subjects, especially for a children's show. How did you feel that your, um, your growth as Jake in that show went? Um. You know, it's 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 interesting. Uh, J Jake's Jake's journey. Um, he, I can I can I can tell you I can tell you this. <clears throat> the character, you know, the character grew on me. The store, the, the the universe of Ooh was difficult for me to navigate, trying to figure it out. Um, but Jake himself was that was a, that was okay. That was that was easy. The themes, I think, the the, you know, the the adult sort of themes on on in in a children's cartoon. I don't know. I I, I think sometimes you just got to break the ice, um, you know. And and yeah, people kind of were a little, uh, you know, ups, upset or you know, kind of shaken, taken aback. But I don't know the the the. The show itself, well, I don't think it was really supposed to be like a like a like a kiddie show. It was kind of a, just the, this this world that anybody could kind of watch, you know, and and enjoy, um, you know. And I and I've been to so many conventions and met so many fans of the show, and they're all ages. So I think that you know any kind of heavy themed episodes or or you know through lines through you know um, multiple episodes um I, I think they were i think they were handled well by by us but i'm sure that, that that there were kids that watched that had many questions or at least were just you know they they, they realized it and I, I think in general if you talk down to children they know it but if you bring kids into the if you bring kids into the fold, and you talk to them, um, and you and you and you encourage them to relate to what's happening, they, they get it. So and I I don't think we ever talked down to kids. We weren't you know like hey we're gonna do a show and no they they, they and in my experience you know they, they the kids don't like that. You know, they want they want to laugh at the same time the adults do. They want to they want to be emotional. They want they they're keyed into that. They they're they're much more pure and less jaded than we are. So I don't know. I I I think that uh, I think that Jake I think Jake grew in the show, just like Bender grew in the show. I think that that's the thing. If you have the if you have the room to move, to grow, then you do. Um, and that's also what propels the stories that we tell. 
So I hope that answers your question. You did inside. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. Do you feel a bit of Bender slipped into Jake? I think a bit of me <laughs> slipped into both of them. You know what I mean? Not in the biblical sense. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I think um, it's impossible to, to not have something, you know, something of your own, you know, be a, a part of a character. Um, and I'm sure, you know, and Bender is that, you know, he, he, he's up in here, he's sort of in the back, in the back of my, like his voice, it bounces off the back of my skull and then back into my mouth. And Jake is really, um, Jake is just my natural voice, but with a hug around it, <laughs> you know, just like a nice warm blanket. Um, and, and yeah, there's there's always going to be something that, that you can you can hear. I mean, nobody's perfect. Uh, we try to be, but it's in, and the more you try, the more you kind of put yourself in a corner. Um, but yeah, I th yeah, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of everybody and everybody. And obviously, one of the ways that the meme culture and, and their own yeah. kind of creations or mashups and things like that. Um, do you have favorites of their particular gifts or, or uh, memes? All, all, all of the fry, all the fry memes are so <laughs> awesome. I I love that. Uh, that it, 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 those those really really kill me. Um, and and Billy originally had no idea what the memes meant or what they were or how culturally significant that they that they were at the time and now he is all over it like white on rice it's so funny like he's just like it's like wow man i love these memes this is amazing um but no fry's memes are definitely definitely my favorite that's always that's always awesome it's always awesome do you have favorite versions of some of the most popular ones, like the "Shut Up and Take My Money" or the or the "Not Sure If" one? Seems the, to the be not, the "Not Sure If" ones are the, the, those are the those are money. Those are absolutely, and those are the ones that he didn't figure he couldn't figure out, like he didn't understand. <laughs> so so, but then when he figured it out, he was like, "Oh, I get it. I now I understand." And yeah, those those are the ones that are the best. Those are the ones that. So you're, so you're saying legitimately Fry was not sure if when he was thinking about the not sure <laughs> oh, Yeah, yeah. No, that's it. No, literally. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Given everything's better if you put more Bender in it, if you could take any TV show and, however inappropriate, add Bender to, as a character to it, oh, what would wow. you do? Oh, um, okay. How about... Um... <laughs> okay. I put, let's put Bender in Westworld. Westworld, why not? <laughs> Death to all humans. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He'd kill everybody. He wouldn't even know. He'd kill all the other, all the other, uh, what, the, the hosts. He'd kill all the, he'd kill everybody. He'd be like, I don't know who's who. <laughs> You're all going to die, baby. <laughs> you know, just a slaughter fest. Yeah, that, I'd love that. That'd be great. That'd be really funny. Or The Walking Dead, why not? You know, just like, ooh. So you're dead already? Wait, I don't get it. You're a real meat bag, you know. Sure, Bender could fit in anywhere. Sure, absolutely. Soap opera, or Telemundo, you can get a, a tele, telenovela, you know. It's just like, ooh, ah, yo soy un macho, hermano. <laughs> I think one of the nicest sounds in the entire world is Bender's I'm up to no good laugh. <laughs> yeah. Can you talk about what that came from? Um, you know what? It's funny because when I would do that, I would always crack up David X. Cohen, um, which is great. When you can make the boss laugh, that's always, that's always awesome. Um, but it was just basically just like a, it was really just like a tee hee 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 hee, like literally just like an angel. Like, well, go for it, you know, and they, you know, sneaky laugh. They would, you know, they, they, it, it, it'd be in parentheses, sneaky laugh. So I would just, you know, think to myself, oh, sneaking around, just like, <laughs> you know, just, ooh, yeah, <laughs> you know, just, just being silly, you know. And then they, they, I mean, then they had other stuff for me to do, like, you know, um, they, they would put in, they would make me whistle as Bender, but they would also say you can't make it sound like any other song. So I had to make up 
like a song that didn't exist and yet not be musical about it, but whistle. So it's like, well, what, what kind of <laughs> narrow path are you sending me? So that's why when you hear Bender whistle, <laughs> that's all it was. But that, that became, that then they, they were just like, oh, just kind of hum along. Yeah. And we want you to hum along now, but don't be musical. And that's what, that's when I was, when I started going, do that, do 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 <laughs> because no, because I wrote those that, that was me that wrote those songs. So every time they get played, I get a check from ASCAP, which is like you know the, the songwriters union in in the United States. I think it's here too as well. But yeah, but yeah, I got a check from you know Bender Strut, you know Bender Whistle, like yeah, a couple of hundred bucks. I'm like yeah, all right, man. <laughs> yeah, I was a songwriter. So yeah, it's pretty funny. <sighs> I know that. We have to let you go. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.